Welcome back motorized bike enthusiast. Over the past two weeks we've had a handful of adventures so in today's video we're going to be putting a new carburetor and head on the Sutek motor. We're going to follow my buddy Samurai through the woods as we clear a path for future use. Then we're going to take the magician through a ride which can best be described as going through hell. And finally we're going to find out how well my buddy built his own bike. And just a quick announcement before we get started, we opened a second channel, LA Lost Footage. This is a channel where I'll be uploading random content that I do, which isn't directly related to motorized bike stuff. Although bikes will occasionally pop up on here, you can look forward to seeing a lot of random hobbies that I'm into. When choosing a head for this motor, I just pick one that appeared to have a large profile in the fins to increase cooling. Performance is going to be kind of hit and miss if you don't really know what you're looking for because the different profile in the domes of these heads can affect compression. And well, I just picked a random one off of Amazon. There are some videos out there of guys who have tested various different kinds, and I suggest you go look those up so you can see if there's a big advantage over one. I didn't notice a big performance gain, definitely didn't notice a loss with this one, but since it's going to be cooling the motor, we're on the up and up. Anyways, let's move on to the carburetor. A while back we picked up this carburetor off of Amazon, thanks to information from the Discord server, and it looks pretty good. I haven't had a chance to test it up until now, but this is going to be our first impressions of this carburetor on the Sutek motor. Although I'll have a detailed review on this after I've used it for a while, at a glance it looks like a great little carburetor. A nice replacement if you can't find the official NT Speed carburetor as this one appears to give me the same performance as the Speed. Given the fact that they're pretty much the same price as a basic carburetor around $10 at the time of filming, I like what I see. It has a handful of upgrades versus the standard. First off, it gets rid of the priming bulb, which is an issue on cheap carburetors and I never really end up using it on the NT speed carburetors. And it has a thumb drain screw on the float bowl, which is really nice. Sorry, it's not a screw, it's just uh, it's like a switch or a paddle. Basically, you push on it and it'll drain fuel out of the float bowl. This is great, especially if your bike's been sitting for a while and the water may have separated out of the cheap gas. You can drain it out of the bottom of the bowl before you start riding. It's also useful for a handful of other situations, which I'm sure we'll run into in the future. The throttle piston on this one is metal instead of plastic as you get on most carburetors and aesthetically it looks fine. I did notice that there are some chips on the float bowl cover. This does not at all affect performance nor would it cause a leak but it was interesting to note that the exact chips on my carburetor look like the ones in the picture for the sale so it's either the exact one they took a picture of or the mold just happens to break off at this particular spot on all of the carburetors. Another convenience is that it comes with a rubber grommet or sleeve for the throttle cable where it goes into the carburetor and this addresses an issue which I spoke on briefly in previous videos about water draining down the throttle cable and getting into the carburetor. Never really a big deal but on a day with heavy rain if the bike gets left out this at least provides some protection. Yeah, I'd like to get the uh, country fried steak sandwich. First ride impressions of the carburetor, it seems to be running a little rich at wide open throttle. This can probably be solved by opening up the airbox a little bit, so I'm going to try that before I get into rejetting and playing with the needle. I need to get some more airflow into the motor. But since this is just a first impressions video, all I can say right now is I like it and I don't see any issues, but only time will tell if this is a carburetor worth upgrading to. I have high hopes. And as for the head, we're kind of in the same boat. This is just a first impressions. I don't see any glaring issue. It seems to seal up fine and our performance is right where it was with the stock head. 
We didn't gain any, but we didn't lose any. But that's not really why I got it. Mainly I got it for cooling. We got the hot summer coming, and I plan on riding this bike more than most, so I want to keep it cool, and this head is definitely going to do that. Up next, the Path Dragon follows my buddy Samurai through the woods as we clear a path. We didn't get to do too much riding on the bike because the trail was just nuked with fallen trees due to the storms we've had lately. But it was a lot of fun and this Samurai is a beast. One doctor he knows that did this, but he spent like $4,000. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed that little montage. That was a blast. We had a good time. Let's move on to the RPS Magician. This is kind of an update on the bike, but more just riding it in the places that we should never be riding it. Basically, we were headed towards the trail that we cleared out with the Samurai so I could take the Magician down it. I decided that I would go down a road I'd never been down before to get there called Wilder. Turns out this road's name speaks for itself, and it was just hell getting there. We ran into what's known as red clay or red mud down here in the south, and I'd never really experienced this stuff to its full potential. I'd run into it a handful of times on the bike, and it always gave me hell mucking up the chain. <sighs> we went down this road, and I'll just let the video speak for itself. By the time we actually got to the trail we were looking for, I was so out of energy that we didn't even bother going down the whole thing. But I know you guys are going to get a kick out of this.
So as a quick update for anybody who's been wondering how the Little Magician's been doing, I don't really ride it very much anymore. Every time I do, something falls off the bike, and that's not really sarcasm. We eventually replaced the tank because it just kept leaking from so many different places and ordering a new one was a hassle. I ended up getting a two-gallon motorized bike tank and just strapping it on there. It's the ghettoest thing in the world, but it works. Uh, two parts of the frame are held together by... Uh, What's that stuff? Quick steel epoxy putty. That stuff is awesome. The frame is not. We replaced the carburetor because the original one started leaking and it just wouldn't stop no matter how many times I rebuilt it. And uh, we've adjusted the valve lash a couple of times, but uh, it just won't hold. It makes so much noise. This bike is garbage. It hasn't gotten any better, but it still works technically, and I will occasionally ride it to work and go down a trail with it, but never anything serious because at some point it's just going to fail completely and I'll just leave it on the side of the road. Or maybe I'll put the motor into something else. I don't know, but this is the Magician, the worst dual sport China bike you can buy. Moving right along. For a while now, a friend of mine has been interested in building his own motorized bike. He's seen mine, and he's seen my videos, and I guess he got bit by the bug, because one day he asked me for my recommendation on a motor. When I found out what frame he was going to put it on, I knew he was going to have his work cut out for him, so I tried to get something that wouldn't need to use a universal adapter. When scouring Amazon for the best kit I could find for the money, I found this particular kit for $118, at the time of purchase with free shipping. It's since gone up to 140 but I can understand why. This is a really solid kit. It checked off all the boxes, having 8mm mounting studs, and 40mm lower front mount, 40mm stroke, 40mm intake. It's essentially a Zeta 4040, unbranded. Also having hex hardware, it just looked like a good kit. Now I couldn't tell for sure from the pictures on what cylinder it had, but when it arrived, we were in luck because it came with a G4 cylinder. Not only that, when we examined the cylinder and piston, it is the cleanest motor I have ever seen. It was pristine. But there's always something with these kits, and it turns out that his kit was missing a clutch cable. It had the sleeve, but no cable. Which is not a big deal because you can use any bike brake cable as a clutch cable. Anyways, let's go ahead and check this thing out. Stay downstairs. So was it pretty easy to make that intake? It wasn't bad. I mean, it took some time. Is it all fabricated? Yes. It was a solid, the, the tube coming out was a solid piece of rod, three quarter inch rod. You test it for air leaks? You like starting fluid or a blue in and held clean. the other side. Yeah, all right, that works. Yeah, I was thinking of the I was thinking of the tires. I thought those were twenty six inch tires. I didn't yeah, realize they're actually twenty four. Twenty four. But it's a lot better for me. I got a better seat. Well, that's good to know. But I mean, it fits me better. I'm, I'm more comfortable on it. So how long did you have this thing sitting outside, rusting up before the bicycle? you? Bicycle. Yeah. Oh, I've been trying to think of when we bought. We bought two of them. I want to say it's probably close to 20 years ago when we bought. I, I want to say we paid 69 dollars for them. Wait, are you are you saying that this is about 20 years old? I think so. 15, 20 years old. <laughs> so I show up here at Lance and we start talking about motorized bikes and stuff. The same tires too. No, yeah, yeah, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> we started talking about motorized bikes and he got a little curious so uh, I looked online for a kit that looked like it would fit this bike at the time I thought it was a 26 inch so I knew it was gonna be tight but I didn't know it was gonna be this tight well it turns out that the motor fits you got it in there just fine it's got the 40 millimeter lower mount but we couldn't get the car carburetor to fit with any of the stock setup so he had to go ahead and make his own intake and that seemed to work out just fine turns out they're 24 inch tires so after it breaks in and gets all its power it should be a torquey little beast so you just had this thing sitting outside for most of its life you know, all cracked dry rotted tires basically we'll feel it stayed in Homer for a while and it stayed over here for a while I bet the grin on your face was pretty big when it fired up for the first time. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Yeah, it's a nice feeling, ain't it? <laughs> All right, I'm going to take it for a spin here real quick. <laughs> Paddle, come on, little cranks.
but you know what? They work really, they grab really well. Oh, this ain't catching? Oh, that's Which weird. One? Yeah, that's kind of, I got to figure something out with that. Huh. It's just hard to, it needs a stop. No, it's uh, it's set up weird. Hold on. Yeah, none of them are like that. I don't know why this one is. That's weird. Yeah, I see you put your fuel filter on the right way. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't believe how many people get that backwards. <laughs> and then you wouldn't believe how many people try and argue that it doesn't matter. That has to do where it clogs up faster the other way. Exactly. I mean, it'll work the other way. It's just going to clog up faster. Hey, were you able, when you manufactured your intake, were you able to match the port to the uh, cylinder yeah. pretty well? Nice. Yeah, hold a lot better than the factory one. Yeah, so that's an advantage of making your own intake because uh, the factory one was round and the cylinder is square. The hardest thing about making it is I'm not that great at TIG welding. It's going to grab more power for sure. They always do. Every single one of them does. After a couple tanks, you'll notice it'll pull better. It'll smooth out. Get off that 16 to 1. Retorque your head bolts. After the first few rides, they, everything kind of settles on these. Because remember, the tolerances on these are, they're not tight like the Zenoans you guys run. Everything's real loose. Right. Yeah, I find it's running real rich, but I don't know if that, that may be because it's so much oil. <clears throat> Yeah, this is this is like yeah i was about to say you see the spark plug right there yeah go to 32 to 1 see how it runs if it's still kind of got that hesitation or bog open up the air box and put a quarter inch hole in that exhaust cap it won't really get any louder it'll be just about okay. the same. it'll have like a little more pop to it but nothing that would like piss off your we neighbors. We need to figure out how to put one of them pipes i got on this thing has anybody put any pipe any <clears throat> pipes on yeah i've got I've got two of them with pipes. That's what makes the difference on a two stroke. That's what everybody says. They said the pipes. More than anything. You get a tune. You can it all you want, but if you ain't got a good pipe, it ain't yeah. going to do a lot. Um, I can send you a link for a couple of them. Walmart should have some 24 inch they tires. Do. I saw okay. them. Go and grab those because you don't want one of these to blow out when you're going. Hey, once you get up to 20 miles an hour, everything past that, you don't want stuff to break. Yeah. So, what about that chain guard? Nobody uses them. I don't use them either. Cause I don't, I don't really see where I need it. Cause I'd have to cut it up and modify it to fit it. I have seen in some rare situations where guys, the shoelaces have gotten sucked in there. Uh, nobody I know has ever gotten hurt. It just binds up the motor, you know? I like my shoelaces. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, professional right there. <laughs> I, I don't put it on mainly because you tweaking these so much, especially around the chain that it just gets in the way. For the rest of our conversation, we basically discussed little things he needs to check up on in the future, but then it evolved into him being impressed at how easy these are to install. Other than having to manufacture his own intake because the frame was so small, you basically just need, well, a toolbox, and that's it. Which is one of the main reasons I got so heavily invested into this hobby. It's cheap and easy. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and until next time, ride safe. One time in one of my videos, before I started working on a bike, I took Henry and I put him on that pole right there, just like we got him right now. Mm -hmm. And I had one Pete 11 dude in my comments, just without hesitation, just go straight to, boy, you better not be leaving your dog out there chained up in the front yard all the time. That's just cruel. And I'm like, dude, if you just look at the grass under him, you'll see that an animal is never there. Yeah, right. Tell him our dog probably gets treated better than he does. <laughs> <laughs> well, if him and my dog was in a burning building and I could only save one, you best believe Henry's coming out alive. <laughs>